I know a lot of people may have seen the article that, that you wrote when you were going through uh, your treatment, uh, Millie, about the Right to Die campaign that you were promoting. And I think it's fair to say that in your time you have been something of an activist for various campaigns, haven't you? And oh. you were just telling us off air about uh, an encounter with Prince Andrew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, a good few years ago, uh, I think it was before I came to the island, uh, Newcastle upon Tyne, the, uh, the council there, along with 14 other councils in England, had decided in their wisdom that they would include the uh, war pensioners' pensions when they were uh, working out their benefits. And I went, no way, no way. My Uncle Tommy and my Uncle Billy were on the front line to give us the freedom we've got today and they wanted to take their pensions into consideration when they're working out their benefits. No, no, this is not right. Well, I knew a lot of other people were, were campaigning, the British Legion and everybody, but, you know, me being me, um, I suddenly decided I've got to do my little bit. So I, I, I wrote out this, this letter to the Queen and I heard Prince Andrew was coming to Tyneside. Anyway, I took several copies of this letter uh, to hand out to the crowd to let them know what I was up to and uh, gets down to the quayside and there's cry out, oh, the crowds. I thought, I'm never going to get any other railings to give this to him. So I thought, what can I do? So I looked very professional. I'd went all dressed in my suit and everything. And uh, I put them in my arm and I said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I have to get through. I have some very important papers. I must get to the barrier. Could you just move, please? Could you just move? Anyway, I got to the barrier. And Prince Andrew was way down on the right, and I'm shouting, Prince Andrew, Prince Andrew, your, ma your majesty, your highness, your highness, Prince Andrew, I really must talk to you. And I'm screeching to the point where I can hardly speak. And uh, the Chelsea war pensioners were looking at me as if I, <laughs> you know, I'd lost my marbles. And uh, I thought, well, if he doesn't come up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump this barrier now. Well, I was <laughs> just about to jump the barrier <laughs> when he comes walking up with his aides and that, and he said, Yes, my dear. Is is there something? Is something the matter? And I said, "Could you give this to your mother? Could you give this to your mother?" I said, "This is terrible." Newcastle Council wanting to take the p the war pensioners' pensions into consideration when they're working out their benefits. I said, "It can't happen. It just can't happen." I said, "You know, we've got to give it to somebody who can, who can help." So he read the letter and he said, "Thank you very much." He was very calm. <laughs> I was like a raven lunatic, of course. And I can imagine uh, after that. <laughs> 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 Anyway, he, he, he read it and everything. He said, well, thank you for giving me this. He said, he said, personally, I don't think we'll be able to do anything about it, or my mother, he said, but me maybe can pass it on to somebody who could. Thank you very much. <laughs> Millie, where did this passion for activism come from, would you say? Oh, it had to come from my mother. Oh, it had to come from my mother. Um, I didn't meet my mother until I was 40. Um, um, my, my parents were divorced when I was young, and... Uh, my uh, my mum and dad both got new new partners, which they eventually married, uh, just like kids of today. But in them days, there was no housing benefit. There was no help. You know, you just had to make do and, and, and mend as you, as you could, you know. And my dad was going to end up living with my nana, who was in a big house. But my mum, because, you know, there was no housing benefit or anything like that, was going to have to go and live in one room with her new partner. So bless her, she thought in her wisdom that you know my dad could give us a, a my dad had a good job uh my dad could give us a better um uh, lifestyle you know anyway when i met her there was no mistake and she was my mother oh <laughs> my god we were like two peas in a pod uh, she loves the music and dancing and you know and joke she had a memory like i mean she died when she was 86 what a memory and she could rattle the jokes off one after the other i don't follow in though in that mind you <laughs> i can never remember a joke but she was amazing. But I had 20 years with her. My half-brothers and sisters, <coughs> bless them, excuse me, <coughs> they welcomed me with open arms and, you know, we they, they still love me to this day and I love them. And my half-brothers and sisters that I, brought, that, that I grew up with on my dad's side, I love them all dearly as well. So I'm very fortunate. I have a huge family. <laughs> 